So in chapter, uh, in problem 3-5, we consider the exponential mortality law. And the special thing about the exponential mortality law is that it is characterized by a so-called constant force of mortality. So the mortality mu of t is equal to lambda constantly, no matter what value t is. Well, of course, t should be greater than zero at least, but but apart from that, it's it's just constant no matter where, where we're looking at on the positive axis. Um, this is interesting for a number of reasons, and before we start solving the exercise, I think we should look at at least one of the reasons. And uh, one of the reasons for this being interesting is because this actually implies that the mean of the remaining lifetime, Tx, is constant, regardless of x. Uh, so let me just write this up in a bit more neat way. So what I mean by the mean of the remaining lifetime of an x-year-old is actually the expected value of how much longer we expect someone to live given that that person exceeds age x. This is also what we call the mean excess life or, or something like that, <laughs> the mean excess life. And um, in the book, if you look at page 20, formula 210, we have an expression of this in terms of the hazard rate, which is it is called in which it is called in chapter two, and here it's called the mortality rate, uh, which is given by the integral from zero to infinity of e to the minus zero to t over the mortality rate, which here is just lambda. And, and we are, we're asked to evaluate it in lambda of y plus x, where x is this excess that we're considering, and then integrate with respect to y up here and integrate with respect to t down here. But since lambda is just constant, well, it, it just doesn't really matter what we evaluate it in, right? So we just have lambda here. And that's uh, a rather interesting thing because uh, that, that, oh, sorry, not dx, dt. So, so, so this just means that the remaining lifetime of an x-year-old is the same regardless of whether you are zero, you are five years old, or you are 110 years old. And, uh, and, and also, it, the exponential mortality law also allows for you to theoretically become uh, infinitely old. We, we won't think too much about that, but, 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 but the thing here is, well, if the mortality is constant, then so is your mean excess lifetime. And that's pretty interesting. So let's just get back on track again. Um, we are asked to show that the distribution function is given by this expression and that the density is given by this expression. And that shouldn't be too hard given that we know that the distribution function f bar of t in terms of the mortality rate is, well, according to page 20 something in the book, page 25 in the book, it's given by e to the minus integral from 0 to t of the mortality rate. And, well, the density is then minus the derivative of the survival function, since the survival function is 1 minus the distribution function. Then we're also asked to show that the conditional survival function of an x-year-old does not depend on the age x, so that no matter what age x we have, then this thing is equal to the survival probability of a newborn. And conclude and interpret the result that f bar of x plus t, so that survival function 
in x plus t, so the probability that a newborn will survive x plus t years is given by the product of survival probabilities for an x year old, uh, of survival probabilities, uh, where we have first the probability of survival for the next x years for a newborn, and then the probability of survival for the next t years for a newborn. So this part is 1, this is 2, and this is 3. Uh, so, so, so basically, I think I've already almost answered exercise part one and also almost answered part three. And part two is luckily not too hard. So we'll look at all of this in one go in the solution phase. Uh, see you in the next video.